Welcome again guys in this video tutorial we'll be talking about a very serious and important topic and that is alternative splicing in my channel you probably seen a lot of videos about RNA splicing mRNA splicing like spliceism mediated splicing or self splicing but this one is slightly different this is alternative splicing now what this actually means this alternative splicing is a kind of splicing process that involves the spliceosome machinery. That means it involves other type of proteins like U2, U3, U4, all those proteins that we've seen uh, used in case of uh, the spliceosome mediated splicing. So if you don't have any idea about splicing, do not watch the video. First go to my channel and watch a splicing video, the basic video first, then come back to this video because it's required. Now the splicing is simply cutting out the introns out from the pre-mRNA transcript of eukaryotic mRNA because eukaryotic mRNA consisting of two different segments introns and exons introns are non-coding segments exons are coding segments so we need to cleave those introns out join all the exons to get a mature mRNA and then it will be 5 prime capped 3 prime polyanilinated and finally we use it for the transcription we use it for the translation or protein synthesis process now here the alternative splicing and all this type of normal splicing is used for uh, for making a mature mrna to make a ready-made mrna for the translation but alternative splicing is a type of rna editing mechanism which helps us to produce different variety of protein from a same single gene so we have a single gene that gene produce multiple varieties of protein how could that possible the only way it is possible is to cleave certain sections or coding regions of the protein out to see what kind of protein it produces sometimes it produces malfunctioning proteins sometimes it produces dangerous protein diseased proteins sometimes it produces better quality proteins sometimes it produces completely different type of proteins that we require for different functions and alternative splicing is a very very important event actually alternative splicing takes place about 92 percent of the time in our pre-rna transcript so you can imagine how much common this this process is in our body it produces many varieties of proteins because ultimately we have uh, you know 90 percent over 90 percent of these genes uh, that are present over 90 percent of those sections of dna that are present are non-coding in eukaryotic cell so only 10% below 10% are coding all these things and all those proteins are made from those less than 10% of the genes that are found in our pre mRNA transcript called as exons so how could all this variety of proteins are produced have you imagined this thing the only way to do it is making versatility by changing the different frame of protein the different open reading frames by shifting it or changing it or by cleaving it joining it and doing this stuff and alternative splicing is one of the way to increase the variety from the same gene over and over again and that is giving us the evolutionary advantage over anything else so alternative splicing is definitely blissful sometimes it go can go wrong sometimes it can produce proteins that cause disease but it's fine but it is a raw material it's a very important thing to occur now how a gene single gene produces multiple types of protein multiple varieties of protein now if you look at the answer these are the five answers these are the way of of doing a alternative splicing now in this alternative splicing what will again I do we have introns and exons will cleave introns out sometimes they can also retain introns like this last one but rest of the time that's also very rare but most of the cases they will cleave introns out but what they do here is changing in the exonic sections they will not join all the exons instead they join some of the exons they won't join some of the exons uh, they'll cleave some of the exons out to make a truncated protein to and doing all this stuff like that okay so let's see here the all the machinery of how we produce this alternative splicing now the first one here is the exon skipping this is the most common way of producing of going for the alternative splicing now what exon skipping is telling us exon skipping is simply if we see here exon skipping so this is uh, the normal way these are the two exons but now let's see for the skipping purpose we have something here as our exon like that so what we know here what what the normal skipping what the normal uh, exon i mean the process of splicing can do this all of these are exons all of these are exons i draw it differently because to show you that this is the exon which will be skipped these are the introns the dashes are introns 
remember these boxes are exons all the boxes every color of the boxes whatever color it is they are exons now the idea here is that here in this case normally if the if the splicing occurs normally what they will do they will cleave all those introns and join all the exons so ultimately it will join here and here that means this exon is joined with this this exon is joined with this this is what is denoting right to make a structure like this red red and in between we have this one this is how the normal splicing we go but here exon skipping occurs that means they will skip one exon during the splicing so ultimately instead of going through like that they will go something like they will join directly exon 1 with exon 2 and now what we get we get a structure like this so as you can see it produces a truncated mRNA right this is a larger mRNA smaller mRNA one exon is skipped here this is one way of going for alternative splicing the second way is mutually exclusive exons now in this mutually exclusive exons again let me draw the scenario this is exon this is intron then this is another exon another exon let's talk about four exons here and these are all the introns that are attached so all of these are exons remember so in this case what will happen mutually exclusive exons they retain either of these exons here either of these exons and they won't retain any else anything else for example let's say they can retain this exon right or they can retain uh, this or this i mean this exon can be retained with this one this can be retained with this one so multiple combinations are kind of possible in this image as you can see it here so this exon can be joined with this one this can be joined with this one right and similarly this is joined with this and this this is joined with this so multiple combinations are possible but in mutually exclusive exon it means it can take in middle there are two exons for example these two exons will be present there they will be present there but what they are doing here in this case they are taking either of these two exons either of these exons let's say it will take this one and this one and it's taking this one or it can take this one and this one so this is a mutually exclusive exon because one of the exon is skipped other one is retained now if you look at here the third one the alternative donor site now remember if you if you know the basic of ex exon splicing i mean uh, the splicing of mrna you probably know this that splicing occurs in a way of you know nucleophilic attack it requires a 3 prime hydroxyl to attack uh, the site so if you look at here this is uh, one of the site is called a called a donor site one of the site is called the acceptor site whatever it is now if you look at here in this case of donor site so you have let's say one donor site like this extra donor site so they have alternative donor site somewhere close like that and if they have this alternative donor site they should have in this case the in, in the exon process is this they should have joined this two but instead they have an alternative site now this site is also an exon but now what they can do is this they'll skip this one how because try to understand the scenario compared to the first one here normally they have a 5 prime and 3 prime hydroxyl this 3 prime hydroxyl help in the in this process so they should have a 3 prime hydroxyl in this red exon here so they need to keep this red exon for the splicing to occur but in this case they have another exon just right after the first exon or some stretch of nucleotide uh, present there which contains that 3 prime hydroxyl so, so they don't need this previous exon anymore so they can join this alternative site with this last exon so instead of forming something like this they are now forming 
something like this. Instead of having this, they are having this. So this is the idea. Remember, they are changing the mRNA transcripts. Whatever is present in the DNA, DNA is the same. Even everything is same in all these cases in the pre-mRNA transcript. After this pre-mRNA splicing, after this splicing event, everything kind of changes. So instead of this, they have this. Now instead of this, they have this. Remember? Now if you look at the third case, the alternative acceptor side. Now this is again the same thing. If we see the donor, now you see the acceptor. So we have this. We have acceptor side means we have something like this. Right? Same thing. What we want? Again, we want this. But instead of that, we are getting this. So again, same thing is happening like this. Both the way. Alternative donor side or alternative acceptor side. Both the way, instead of getting exons like that, we are getting something. Because we are getting either donor or acceptor present there, which is doing the job. So we don't need those for completion of the splicing. So this is the cell strategy to, to check all the different ways. How can it produce a different type of machinery to produce truncated mRNA or other, other things so that new ty type of protein is produced. The th last thing is the intron retention. This is very rare. Most common is the exon skipping that I have told. That is the most common. But this intron retention. Now try to understand if there are multiple exons like that and they can skip in different combinations. They can rise many varieties of mRNA transcript form one particular pre-mRNA. Multiple varieties. Many combinations are possible. If there are 35 let's say exons. So multiple combinations are possible. They can skip one exon. They can skip five exons. They can skip different exons at different places. Multiple things are possible. Now if we look at the intron retention, in this way actually they retain the intron. So they kind of retain the intron section. They have this and they retain some section of the introns in between. Though that intron is not coding any of the uh, protein segment because it is not coding. Uh, so the protein that they produce either have a truncated version or they have stop codon so ultimately stop the protein synthesis so that's most of the time functionless but these are the four different ways of they produce alternative splicing and among them exon skipping is very very important this is the most common one and other others are also possible right so that kind of it about the alternative splicing and i hope that's helpful guys if you like the video please subscribe uh, hit the like button share this with your friends Sharing is a good habit, start doing so.